In this problem, again, we need to determine the total moments caused by the three forces, F1, F2, and F3, about uh, two points, point B and C, respectively. Uh, we, of course, can still use the scalar formulation, M equals to F times D. Um, for example, if we need to determine the moment caused by uh, force F1 about point B, for example, then we need to extend the line of action of this force. And then we can draw a line from point B to be perpendicular to the line of action. And then we need to use trigonometry to determine this D, this moment arm. And then we take the moment arm multiplied by 4 kN. Um, then we can determine the moment caused by F1 about point B. So that would definitely work. But in this case, we're going to use this example to illustrate the a principle of moment, which means that we can actually resolve a force into its components and then determine the total moment caused by the component forces about point B. So in this case, we are going to um, conveniently represent our three forces into their X and Y components. So we will have a F1, Y, and F1, X. And we will have a F2, X, and F2, Y. And then we'll have the F3, X, and then F3, Y. So pay attention to the direction of these components. The reason why we want to do that is because um, these components are either horizontal or vertical. So in this example, their moment arms uh, to point B and point C are a lot easier to determine than uh, if we want to determine the moment arm of the original forces about these two points. So let's look at point B first, resultant moment about point B by convention, counterclockwise is positive. So this equals to the moment caused by F1x about point B. Well, as you can see, the line of action of F1x passes through point B. Therefore, F1x does not have any moment about point B. And then we move on to F1y. F1y has the magnitude of 4 kN times sine 45 degree. That's the magnitude of F1y. And its moment arm to point B is easy to determine. This is simply 2 meter. It's causing a counterclockwise rotational effect. Therefore, the moment is positive. And then we move on to F2. The force F2 passes through point B. Therefore, F2 does not have any moment about point B. And then we realize that the line of action of F3y also passes through point B. Therefore, the only moment that F3 has about point B is from this component F3x. Its magnitude is 3 times cosine 30 degree, and its moment arm is simply 1.5 meter. So this component F3x is also causing a counterclockwise rotational effect about point B. Therefore, it is still a plus sign. So that's it. As you can see, even though it looked at the uh, beginning, we had, we had doubled our work because instead of having three um, forces, we ended up with six force components. However, out of these six components, F1x, F2y, F2x, and F3y, these four force components don't have moment about point B. Therefore, we ended up only calculating the moment caused by F1y and F3x. So from there, we can evaluate, and that equals to 9.55 in the unit of kilonewton meter. All right, so now we move on to point C, still trying to determine the resultant moment caused by these three forces about point C. F1, F1 has a component F1y and F1x, and both of them have moment about point C. 
Therefore, resultant moment about point C again counterclockwise is positive equals to F one x equals to four times cosine forty five degree, and its moment arm is one point five meter. It is causing a counterclockwise rotation, so it's positive. F one y has a magnitude of four times the sine forty five degree. His moment arm from point C is this distance two meter. Also counterclockwise, also positive. So that's F one. Moving on to F two. F two has two components: F two x and F two y. And as you can see, the component F two y, its line of action passes through point C. It does not have any moment about point C. And then moving on to F two x. F two x has a magnitude of Five, the x component determined by this three four five triangle. It's three over five. That's the magnitude of F two x, and then its moment arm is this distance right here. So that is one point five meter. Now F two x is creating a clockwise rotational effect about point C. Therefore, its magnit its moment about point C is negative. Lastly, we have force F three. Its line of action passes through point C already. Therefore, it does not have any moment about point C. So, we have evaluated all the moments about point C, and that equals to five point four zero in the unit of kilonewton meter. So now we have applied the principle of moment to、uh, solve this problem. By resolving the forces into convenient components, convenient meaning that their moment arms to the point of reference are easier to determine, and then we can determine the resultant moment by summing the、uh, moment caused by those component forces about the reference point.